Hi, it's Ingrid Dara of Causeway Spirit and I'm really excited to share this with you guys. This is my latest painting. I was very drawn to working with these beautiful vibrant jewel tones and we're going to be making a wave painting and it's going to be over two canvases so it's a diptych which just means that it's over two surfaces. The paints are mixed up and ready to go. It's just acrylic paint and water. So first of all you want to plan your composition. So um, I want some negative space with the white for the background. So you'll see here I've mixed up a lot more of the white paint than I have of the other ones. That's because it has to cover the background but also I want to go over the, the final paint with the white again and that sometimes just gives some lovely contrast and it can make it look like the foam that you can get with the water um, at the ocean with the waves kind of coming in and out so we're just spreading that as you can see here with a palette knife. You will see the colors that I'm using in a few minutes. I'm using Amsterdam paint and Windsor and Newton. Now, if you're just starting out, it's perfectly fine to use some cheaper alternatives and some craft paint of the acrylic paint and then mix it with your water. I'm using a ratio here of 60% paint to 40% water. And then you really need to mix that a little bit of water in at a time slowly till you get the desired consistency and ideally you want all of your paint to be at a similar consistency whenever you're working with pouring medium um, it just helps to make sure that your composition will hold and that you're not losing any of your colors um, as they kind of fade or absorbed by other ones okay so we're just doing this white first. And then you'll see in a few moments I'm also working with a little bit of black to give contrast, some light gold, some ultramarine blue, some permanent rose and some cadmium yellow. So whenever you're preparing to sell your art or to even give it as gifts, you maybe want to upgrade your quality of paint. It just gives you um, a more professional finish and more longevity because you'll just get a, a more vibrant colors with them. Um, so again, the Amsterdam and the Windsor and Newton are two that I really like. Golden is another one that I really like. Um, but if you're on a budget and you're starting out, you know, a cheaper alternative will be okay. I have to say though that sometimes they don't mix that well with water, <laughs> as I've learned from personal experience in my early stages. But, you know, it's trial and error and you can try and see how that goes for you. Okay, so we have our white background now. And you always want to be planning your composition ahead of time and the colors you want to use. I'm going in here with the torch. The reason being is that, as some of you may already know, if you're working with acrylic pouring mediums, whenever you mix your paint with the water, you get some air bubbles. So you want to use your torch to go in and just pop those bubbles. And it just means that then it'll dry better for you without the little marks that you would get if you didn't get rid of your air bubbles. The other time that we use the torch is whenever you are working with your paint and how they interact with each other, the torch will actually help for the paint to react with each other um, and to actually help you to get some lovely cells coming up from the paint that's underneath the surface level. So that's another time whenever we use our torch. So we're just starting here with a little bit of black. 
and cresting the wave. And you can see here that I'm considering um, the composition because I really like to work with the rule of thirds. So if you're an artist or if you have a background in photography or painting, you'll know about the rule of thirds. But for those of you who that's something that's more new to you, what you want to be doing is imagining your canvas is split into thirds, both vertically and horizontally. And then you want to have the main composition of your piece along those lines that are on that imaginary grid. It's more pleasing to the human eye. It helps to draw the viewer's eye in to the piece, into the image, and it'll bring their eye to the, the main point of interest in the painting or in the photograph or whatever it is that you're working with. So you'll see here, as I'm starting at the left hand side, I'm coming in a third of the way down. And then on the other side, my wave is cresting again about a third of the way down. And again, that's just working with the rule of thirds and looking at the, um, the overall aesthetics of the composition. So we've got our blue on now and our black. So now we're coming in with our permanent rose, which really just it brings this beautiful fuchsia kind of pink color. And it's it was fun to really I had I had an idea to work with these jewel tones. Um, it just reminded me of the Caribbean. Um, I actually I actually was so excited to use these paints that I got that I jumped in and started making it recently just a few days ago but we were actually having a heat wave in Northern Ireland so it was over 30 degrees of heat with no air conditioning <laughs> so um, with hindsight if I just could have waited a little bit and waited until this week it would have been a lot more pleasant for me to be painting but I was just so excited I just jumped in and got started with it so now we have our cadmium yellow. I just love how that's coming in there with the pink and the, the, the blue, with the ultramarine blue. You'll see that I have a plastic bag underneath the canvases. You really, it really helps when you're working with fluid paint to do that because you will get some paint coming over the sides, especially when you start to blow the paint. So it just means it's, it catches the paint for you and you probably want to put some on the floor as well, like an old sheet or um, an, again, you know, a plastic bag and I can reuse these and turn them inside out and flip them over. So once the paint is dry, I can actually get a lot of use out of one plastic bag. You'll see here, I've got a little bit too much white in this top right corner. It's a little bit more than I was kind of planning to have there because I want the other colors coming through as well. But I just went back in with a paper towel and lifted some of that back off. And as Bob Ross says, there's no mistakes, just happy accidents, right? So that's the lovely thing as well about working with fluid paint is that, you know, sometimes something happens and you didn't quite plan it, but it just works and it's unexpected and um, it then becomes something that you might do again another time. But as well as that, as part of the journey, it's learning how to fix little things and how to work around little things that, um, you know, there's lots and lots of ways to fix something that you're maybe thinking, oh, I wish that was a little bit different or I want to change that. You know, you can go in, I, I, I'll, you'll not see it on here, but um, in a few minutes, I'll go in with the hairdryer 
on a low setting, on a cool setting and work with that to move the paint. But then off camera, I, I'll actually then go in for a few minutes after that just to work on the composition by blowing a little bit with my mouth. Um, I used a little plastic skewer and a toothpick to also um, move some of the um, paint around just to get a composition that I was happy with. So I'm going in now here with some white over the top and especially when you're doing a wave pour, this can really give you that lovely um, foam effect of the water and the movement. You can really capture that movement of the water. So I usually when I'm doing a wave, I will go back over the top with some white. The other thing that I did off camera with this one is a few finger swipes. Again, just working with the composition and getting the colors to interact the way that I wanted them to. And a lot of that is very intuitive, to be honest. Um, and it just comes with practice. So I'm getting ready to do some blowing. And again, this is on a low heat and I'm actually holding down the cool button as well. Just working slowly and gently. You don't want to go over the colors too much because what can happen is that they will actually become muddy and you can lose some of the vibrancy. And then working on the second canvas. So all of my original art is shown on my social media. So I'm on Facebook and Instagram as Ingrid Dara dot Causeway Spirit. So feel free to follow me on there. You can also keep an eye on my website, which is ingridara.com. And then in the online store, you will see the pieces that are available to sell and purchase. Now you will see on there postage is UK postage, but I can also send to you um, internationally. So that's something you can just message me about and then I can check a price for you for that. So you'll see here I'm just working on the composition a little bit because I lost a little bit of my white on the canvas. Um, so I just blew that back over the colors to blow the white back over just to give me that little bit of negative space again. So here is the finished product and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. The beautiful vibrant colors, the yellow, the blue and the pink. So thank you so much for joining me. Take care for now. Lots of love.